The theorem of the regularity of monotonic sequences, which is also called the existence of the limit for monotonic sequences, just says that every monotonic sequence is regular. And specifically, if a sequence is monotonic increasing and also bounded, we can be sure in that case that it would be convergent. Keep in mind that the opposite is not true. So if a sequence is bounded, it doesn't have to be increasing. It doesn't have to be monotonic at all, actually. And if instead the sequence is monotonic increasing and unbounded, we can be sure that it's going to be divergent to plus infinity. And of course, you could flip this around for monotonic decreasing. So if it's decreasing and bounded, it would now be convergent as well. But if it's monotonic decreasing unbounded, it would be divergent to minus infinity now. So for the proof, we don't have to prove every single of the four cases. We can just prove these two or the other two. It doesn't actually make a difference. Before we look at the proof, if we look at a few examples of uh, two sequences that satisfy these situations, for the first one we could have something that looks like this, that converges to a number, which we can call L. And for the second case, if it's increasing and unbounded, Keep in mind that any increasing sequence is definitely bounded below. So if they tell you that it's unbounded, since automatically it has to be bounded below, then it must be unbounded above. So maybe something like this. So just to clarify, with functions, if something is increasing, it does not have to be bounded below necessarily. But for sequences, it does, because keep in mind that the first point for a sequence is a specific point. There's nothing before that. And so if it's increasing from there, then this point has to be the lowest point. So for any increasing sequence, the very first point, which is uh, in this case a zero, would be the minimum. And also for this one. And instead for decreasing sequences, you would have a maximum at the first term. So if we want to prove the first one, first we have to think about what we're trying to prove, which is that the sequence is convergent. So if a sequence is convergent, specifically to a number that we can call L minus, because it's converging from below if it's increasing. That means that if you take a neighborhood of L minus, so we're just going to take a neighborhood from below. So that could be everything from here to here. Essentially, we went down uh, a little bit by a certain radius, which we call epsilon. So this uh, boundary of the neighborhood we could call L minus epsilon. And we can see that starting uh, from some point, which would be this one over here, we're going to call that N bar. Starting from that point, the sequence will enter the neighborhood and then it will stay in the neighborhood. So essentially we're saying that eventually the sequence will uh, belong to the neighborhood. And it has to be true for every neighborhood, whether it's very big or very small. For the other one, we have to prove that it's divergent plus infinity which formally means that if you take a neighborhood of plus infinity, which we find by taking a number k that's positive, we can say again that starting from some point, which would probably be over here, the sequence will always be in the neighborhood, which means it will be above k. So everything here would be a neighborhood of plus infinity. So if we start with the first one, formally we're trying to prove that for every radius that you take, and the radius epsilon is always greater than zero, there exists a particular point that we call n bar, which is a natural number, after which the sequence will belong to the neighborhood, which specifically means that a n would have to be in between l minus epsilon, not included, and L included. So the reason L is included is because we're taking neighborhood from below, and by definition, the neighborhood has to include the original value. So since the original value was L, that needs to be included. 
while the other end of the neighborhood is not and going to be included. So in order to prove this, first of all, we can call the range uh, E or any letter. Since in the first case, we're assuming that it's monotonic, increasing, and bounded. If it's bounded, that means that the range is bounded. And whenever something is bounded, that means that it has an infimum and also a supremum. So we don't actually care about the infimum for this particular case. We just care about the supremum. And we're going to call the supremum L. And using the properties of the supremum, a supremum is a value that is always bigger or equal to all the values of the sequence. So we can say that L is definitely bigger or equal to a n for every n. And also we can say that for the supremum, there's always going to be a point of the sequence that is right below it. So that means formally that for every epsilon that we take that is greater than zero, there exists a value of a n bar. which belongs to the range. And a n bar is going to be in the neighborhood of the supremum, specifically in a lower neighborhood of the supremum. So notice how this is very similar to what we we're trying to prove. The difference is that in, uh, in the part that we're trying to prove, we're trying to say that after some point, all of the points of the sequence will belong to this neighborhood. And right, right now we're just saying that there is a specific point which belongs to the neighborhood. So now we can use the fact that the sequence is monotonic is increasing to put everything together. Because if the sequence is monotonic increasing, that means that all the values that come uh, that are more to the right of the one that we were considering are definitely going to be bigger or equal to the one that we had before. So that means that for every n after that point, all the a n values of the sequence will be greater or equal to that value that we had. And if we just flip, it, flip the inequality around, we get a n bar is smaller or equal to a n. So if we now combine these two inequalities together, notice how they both have a n bar. So if we put it all together, we get L minus epsilon is smaller than a n bar, which here we said was smaller or equal to a n, which in turn is then smaller or equal to L, since L was a supremum, so a n cannot go past L. Now for the definition of convergent, the one we had up here, we didn't really care about a n bar, so this part we can just ignore. And this way we're left with what we were trying to prove. So this confirms that a n is converging to L specifically from below. So we can write that as a n converges to L minus. So the main idea here was just that we said that using the definition of the supremum, uh, there was always some point in the range that was very close to the supremum itself. So essentially it was in a lower neighborhood of the supremum. And then we concluded that since the sequence was also increasing, all the points after that specific point would also have to be in the neighborhood, which then would satisfy the definition of convergence. Now we can look at the other situation. So for the other situation, the sequence is monotonic increasing and also unbounded. So I mentioned earlier how if a sequence is monotonic increasing, automatically it's bounded below. So if you're told that it's unbounded, that must specifically mean that it's unbounded above. So we're just going to prove this. And uh, specifically what we need to prove is that for every k value which is bigger than zero, there exists an n bar, so again a specific point, after which the sequence will be greater than k.
So if we start off with the fact that the um, sequence is monotonic increasing, we can say automatically that it's going to be bounded below. Because all of the sequence terms, which we can call a n, are definitely going to be small, sorry, bigger or equal to the original term a0. So since we know from the beginning that it's monotonic, uh, increasing, and unbounded, if we know that it's bounded below, now we can say for sure that it's specifically unbounded above. And if we use the definition of unbounded above, that means that for every k, which is bigger than 0, there will always be a specific point which will be greater than that value. So again, we have a specific a n bar value in the range, which will be bigger than k. And since, again, the sequence is monotonic increasing, we can do the same thing that we did before and say that for every n bigger than n bar, if the sequence is increasing, then all the values that come after a n bar, so the ones that are more to the right, are bigger or equal to a n bar. And if we combine that together with the fact that we just said a n bar was bigger than k, then again we can ignore this part and conclude that a n must be bigger than k. And so if the sequence is consistently bigger than k after some point, then we can conclude that the sequence satisfies the definition of divergence, and so it's divergent to bus infinity.